Welcome Life Sciences to another new exciting Life Science lesson. We are on the path of plant biodiversity. Now I know that most of you when you hear the word plants you start to roll your eyes and it's not always your favorite part of Life Science. But I must tell you, it's the part that you can see the most. It's around you all the time, right? And it's, you can actually do a lot with it. You can go and touch it. You can feel it. You can see it. So plants are really, really awesome. So what are we looking at? So just a quick recap from our last lesson, what we would have looked at. We started looking at this whole concept of the plant kingdom. Right? So plants are multicellular all right, organisms, they have chlorophyll, they can photosynthesize, right? they have got roots, stems and leaves. And in our last lesson, we looked at the evolution of plants. We looked at the moss, all right? bryophytes, we looked at the fern, pteridophytes, we looked at the pine cone, gymnosperms, and then we looked at all right, the highest order of all our plants, our angiosperms sperms, our flowering plants. Now today's lesson we're going to look at a very important concept on how plants reproduce. And when we looked at the evolution of plants, right, we saw this whole concept of how water played a big role in reproduction in the beginning and how it started to lose its significance towards the end when we got to our gymnosperms and our angiosperms. Now the concept that I want you to think of, we're looking at how plants reproduce. And we're going to look at two ways right, that the plants can reproduce. It's either asexual reproduction or by means of sexual reproduction. Now I want to pose this question to you. When we think of plants, I often think you guys have a concept of flowers, maybe plants all right, in your garden, grass or whatever. But what I actually want you to think of, and this is the most important thing about plants, is plants are food. So when we're looking at the concepts that we're going to all right, tease out today, the asexual and the sexual reproduction, I kind of need you to put on a farmer's hat. Right? What do I mean by that is we're not thinking like what kind of flower I want, am I going to make my garden pretty? I'm thinking along the lines of I have got to make food. All right, I have got to produce food. I've got to make crops. I've got to feed our country because that is what plants actually are. And the concept that we're looking at here very simply is, am I looking for something that's predictable? Do I want the same thing over and over again because I know what I'm going to produce? Or do I want the unpredictable? Right? Do I want something new? Because with that something new, right, something new that's really good in my crops could come about. So that's the process I want you to think about today when we're looking at asexual versus sexual reproduction. We're looking more in the lines of predictability versus something new that could bring something really good that we haven't seen before. All right. So when we're looking at asexual and sexual reproduction, right, we're going to look at the concept. And then for each of them, you need to be able to, all right, decide what are the advantages of this type of reproduction. So as a farmer, maybe, what would the advantages be to me or what would the disadvantage? Why would I not use this process? And exactly the same on the other side for sexual reproduction. What are the advantages of sexual reproduction versus the disadvantages? Knowing, all right, the pros and the cons for each of those. 
Now there's a few new words that might come into being here. As I said to you, it's the terminology. We're going to use new words. You need to understand what they mean and you need to know how we use them in this concept of the plant biodiversity. Okay, so we're going to start off now and we're going to look at, as I said to you, there are two ways in which plants can reproduce. Now, please understand that some plants can use both methods. It's not necessarily a plant can just use asexual or just use sexual. Some plants are able to use both their methods. Okay, so when we're looking at that, that's the concept. Don't think that it's just going to be the one. So the first thing we need to look at is what is reproduction? Now, the concept of reproduction is to make offspring. What is offspring? It's children, if I could use it. Obviously, not in the plant sense, because that's where we're looking at. So, a plant making another plant, all right, a new plant, giving rise to something new, carrying on that species, carrying on the traits of that plant. That is what we're talking about when we look at reproduction, making more of you, making more of the plant. So we're looking at plants. So plant making, all right, being able to give rise to another plant. And the two ways in which it can do that is asexual or sexual. And we're going to look into those concepts. All right, so now we're going to look at the concept of asexual reproduction. And here there are quite a few terms that we're going to use that might be new. I'm going to highlight them, I'm going to underline them, right, and I'm going to explain the concept to you. Right, so let's start off kicking off with what exactly is going to be, all right, what exactly is asexual reproduction. Now guys, we don't tend to use asexual reproduction a lot. We use the word vegetative propagation, right? And propagation just means to make something new. So when we're looking at asexual reproduction, these are the most important things. Number one, there is only one parent. Now, the lesson that we are going to look at later in the series involves the whole structure of a flower. And when we get to a flower, I'm going to quickly draw one. If we look at a flower over here, what a flower has is male and female structures. We'll look at that just now. This, when it comes to asexual reproduction, all right, that is not going to be the case. One parent, we're going to have one plant, is able to give rise, all right, to many. So you have this concept, where you take away this concept of male and female, which leads us to our second point. When we have male and female, male and female give rise to a gamete. And what the word gamete means is a sex cell, right? So what it means is, is that a male will give rise to a male sex cell and a female will give rise to a female sex cell. In plants, pollen is the male sex cell. In the plant, the ovule is going to be the female. But you're going to get a much greater idea of that in our next lesson when we look specifically at the flower. So what happens here is when we look at this process, this is the key word. It is mitosis. Now you guys have probably done mitosis before. And mitosis means to make an identical copy. Right, so now I'm going to let you to start thinking this word predictable, all right? If I am going to use or undergo asexual reproduction, the process is, to, is by mitosis, and that means to make an identical copy. So if I know what I've got, all the offspring are going to be the same, which leads us to our last, last plant, when something is the same, 
we use the word a clone, right? Cloning is to make something identical. So when we're looking at the concept of asexual reproduction, we, it's about predictability. It's making clones. So if I have got this plant, say for example, right, with a really big, say for example, a potato, and it's a really big potato, I can take this potato and I'm going to keep making offspring because I know it's going to be a big potato. So it's predictable. I know what I'm going to get. All right. That is where the concept is of asexual reproduction. This process of mitosis, all right, of cloning, I know what I'm going to get. Now guys, you need to look at a few examples of how plants can use it. Right, we still, first thing we're going to look at is stems. Now, the two examples over here, I've given you the first one. I've said it's an onion, right? But if I have a look at this one over here, this is garlic. Right, now both of them, if you have a look over here, there's a little bud. Now, what does a bud mean? The bud makes new features. You don't see anything about a male and you don't see anything about a female. And all the bud does, here's my bud, it divides by mitosis. Layer onion, layer onion, layer onion. Look at the bottom, there's a root. So it's a root. What is my stem doing? There's a bud, growing, growing, growing. Right, and what are onions, what are garlic? They are food, right? Remember this concept of food. So they don't need a male, they don't need a female in this regard, right? What we call them, guys, this is important. It's a bulb. That's the important word. They are bulbs. They are underneath this, the ground and they can make new plants, all right, just by that little bud. Okay, our next example is a runner or a stolon. Now, the best example that you probably right, might be able to get to quite quickly is grass. I don't know if you've ever, if I pull out grass. So I take a piece of grass and I pull it and not one, it doesn't, it doesn't come up just as one. As I pull it, a whole long thread, right? So I pull up grass and it just goes long, 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 long. Okay, that is what a runner or a stolon is. So have a look over here. Look, see, this is the plant. And what it does is it produces, and basically it's a stem above the ground from the roots. And guess what? By mitosis, and what does it start to develop? It starts to develop new roots and it produces a new plant. Can you see over here? No male or no female, all right? involved in this and grass is an example another one is strawberries right strawberries the lovely yummy strawberry fruit that's also an example of it okay the next one believe it or not guys is bananas now i want you to have a look over here this is called a rhizome and a rhizome is an underground stem and you would have heard this word when we did the fern the fern had a all right, a rhizome. And what it does here, I want to look at this diagram. Just by mitosis, a little, all right, part of the stem starts to grow. And what do I have right next to it? A beautiful new banana tree. All right, banana is an example of also of how some plants can use, right, to reproduce asexually. Ah, potatoes. How many of you guys, all right, have got those potatoes that you leave in like maybe a cabinet and the next thing you know, you go to your potatoes and look what they've got growing from them. They've got these little like, like things growing. And those guys are, are new plants. They are called little potato eyes, all right? And believe it or not, and I've actually done it, you take these, you cut the potato, and you put it in the ground and guess what's going to happen? New potato plants. This is what we call a tuber. 
right? It's still a stem and it is a tuber, right? Okay, guys, and these little eyes are going to become the new potato. So by the process of mitosis, we're going to just produce new potatoes. Right, these are cuttings now. Have a look over here. I've done this lots of times before with this particular plant. Have a look at this diagram. All I did was I cut the stem and I put it in water. And guess what happened? The stem grew roots. And as soon as the roots are visible, I go and I plant in the ground. But actually, I actually cut out the step totally. I actually took the leaf, right, and I put it directly in the soil. And in the soil, it started to grow roots, and I grew a beautiful geranium, a cutting. Yes, I know it's not natural, but it is a way, right, in which we can reproduce. Oh, guys, now the next one are root tubers. Okay, now where is potatoes with stems? Sweet potatoes. Right, much, a little bit more healthier than our potatoes. Sweet potatoes, again food, right, are roots. They're root tubers and again they're going to produce these little tubers asexually by mitosis. And as I said to you, again we're going to have the food. Here is an example. All right, sometimes a sucker, right, comes out. A sucker comes out and a new plant grows. This is called the penduring. And it's, a, all right, a plant, almost like a bit of a thorn tree, right, that is endemic to our country. So over there, the penduring is an example of a tree that can actually, all right, develop via a sucker. So that we've got bulbs, we've got tubers, we've got stolons. We've got suckers that grow out of the root, right? The least common of them, right, is leaves. And you can some, this is called the Cape Primrose. Right? And what we can do, not so much for food, but maybe looking pretty, we can cut the leaf and we just cut it over here and we put it into the soil and you see what happens. New little plants are starting to develop. The roots are going to grow and ultimately we're going to get the new plants. All of these ways done asexually. So when we're looking at asexual reproduction, predictability, right? We know what we're going to get. Okay guys, we're gonna have a quick break. I will see you in just a bit. Welcome back Life Sciences, I hope you had a little bit of a small break and maybe you could have checked out the plants around you, All right, see if you could see any of the characteristics or maybe you went to your potatoes if you had them there and to see if they were growing eyes. Right now as I say to you, one of the concepts we must look at is what are the advantages All right, and disadvantages of asexual reproduction. So let's have a look at the different points. Right, guys, we're looking at first, remember you need to have your farmer's hat on, if I could use that, or you're a crop grower. We're looking at the advantages. Why would it be, right, an advantage to grow my crops asexually? Now, when we look at it, the section that we're going to look at, right, after this, we're going to look at the concept of a flower. Right, now you need to look at this whole concept, right, as energy. And what do I mean by that is this, the advantages of asexual reproduction, they don't have to make a flower. Making it gives energy, all right? Now we need another thing. What do I don't have, all right, is pollinators. If I don't have a flower, what do I not need? I don't need the bees. I don't need butterflies. I don't need birds. I don't need, I'm taking the middle man if I was to use that out of the equation. So it's actually for the plants, it saves them a lot of energy, right? Having no, not no flower, not having to make the pollen, right? Because remember what we said? Pollen was the male part and the flower is the 
sexual reproductive organ. So we're taking them out the equation, right? But what does that mean for us? It means quick, right guys? It's quick, right? I don't have to rely on all of those things. I don't have to find a partner, right? I don't have to rely on the pollinators of taking it from the male to the female. The one parent can do it. It's quick, right? It's cheap, it's simpler. Why do you think grass is grass? Why do we use it for our lawns? Very simply, we buy them on the street corner and grass is actually quite cheap. We lay them down, right? And what happens? All those little runners go and soon our garden, all right, is full of grass. And I have the battle of the weeds as well, but it's a quick and it's a simple and it's a cheap method. Okay, now we're getting into a concept that you're going to look at much later when we look at, when you do more of um, DNA, et cetera, in when you do grade 12 work, et cetera. But this is called, it's genetically identical. Now, what that means is, remember we said we made a clone. And a clone means I know what I'm getting year after year after year. So remember, it's all about this predictability. Now, when things are genetically all right, identical, this is good when conditions are stable. What I'm talking about now is the environment is stable. If so, for example, we've got global warming coming or something changes, the environment changes, okay? That is an unstable environment and that we're going to look at as a disadvantage. Because it's got the same genes, it might not adapt. But if it's the same environment year after year after year, I'm going to produce the same thing, the same predictability, if that is what I want. Remember, what do, what do I want? So what happens here then, all right, is that if a change does occur, and this word here is a favorable mutation, if maybe by some chance during mitosis something goes wrong, but it's a good something goes wrong, that mutation, all right, is going to be passed on very quickly. Because why? Process of mitosis. It's going to start making identical copies with that really good trait. But that is going to lead us, all right, to uh, when we look at our disadvantages, we're going to look at something else. Guys, now as well, the concept. Asexual reproduction does not give rise to a seed. And seeds can lie dormant, or they might need ideal conditions, or they might grow in seasons. And this means, okay, that if we don't have any seeds, we can grow, propagate means to grow, the whole year around. Do you see it? These are called hydroponics or, or tunnels. And a lot of our food, a lot of our fruits, um, you guys are quite young. Um, my age, when I was growing up, we only had certain fruit in certain seasons because that is when they grow, grew. But now with asexual reproduction, without that seed, you actually can see and putting them in tunnels, taking a bit of the environment away, the seasons away, you can actually grow certain things the whole year, right? Seasonal. So you're going to make money on those things the whole year. You have strawberries usually the whole year. You might even have oranges, etc. The whole year when, right, when I was growing up, we only had them during the winter. Now, if we have a look at the disadvantages, the disadvantages basically go about this no genetic variation. Because it's the same thing, same thing, same thing, if the environment changes, they won't have the genes to be able to adapt. It's one of the things that we look at when you're going to look at evolution. Evolution relies on this concept of mutation, of change. But mitosis, cloning, there is no change. It's the same thing, right? So the problem is, if you're going to have that, and if the environment does change, the plants might not be able to adapt, and they could die out. Okay, so that's exactly what will happen. 
On the same line, again, if there's a strong gene, they'll pass it on. Unfortunately, if there is a weak gene, if the plant, sometimes you'll see one of the things is brown specks on the leaves. That's not a good thing for the leaves. That can be passed on. So, yes, there are more advantages than disadvantages, but in the long run, what are you looking for? Okay, let's have now look at the concept of sexual reproduction, right? And if we break down the word, right, when we talk about sex, what are we talking about quite simply, all right, is there is usually two individuals involved. So you need two partners, all right, two parents. And this, when we get to plants, all right, involves gametes. So we're going to have a male, as we said, is a pollen grain. And we're going to have an ovule, which is the female egg. Right, be very careful that you say ovule, because sometimes when you use another word for humans, we use ovum, and they're different things. Guys, this is where we do not have predictability. When you've got a male and when you've got a female, you have no idea when you combine the two what you are going to get. It is a surprise. And the, because they are different, all right, what could happen is that surprise could hold something really good and new or maybe not so much. Now I want to show you, you're going to look at the, the flower later, but the whole concept of sexual reproduction is this. This is the male and it's going to produce pollen. It's the anther. This is the female and this is the ovule. All right? And what happens during um, reproduction is the male lands over here, right? He moves all the way and fertilization occurs. So it's a whole, it's a big process. But the end result, the end result of sexual reproduction is this concept of a seed. And what information, what genetic information is in that seed that comes from the male and what comes from the female. Okay, so when it comes to sexual reproduction, we don't know what we're going to get. What's in the male? What genetic material is pollen? What is in the female? And when those two fertilize, what is going to come out in the seed? What is the plant? What, is there something new? Is there not something new? Is there a trait maybe that makes it more resilient? Is it a good trait? Is it maybe resistant to insects? The insect doesn't come. So that's what we look at when we look at sexual reproduction. All right, so what are our advantages? Now guys, the advantages are mostly about this concept of genetic variation. When we have genetic variation, we can get something new. And what does that mean? Very simply, maybe the plant is resistant to a disease, okay? It brings in something new. Or when the environments are changed, because it's got something new, it stands a really good chance to survive in these different, all right, situations. Also, when we're looking at all right, bringing in something new. Maybe the plant did have a harmful mutation, but as soon as you bring in a male and a female, you, you, you're not reliant on just the one. It's quite possible that that harmful mutation, we can eradicate, we don't pass it on, and it's gone. Whereas in mitosis, we definitely had sexual, re I mean, asexual reproduction, we're definitely going to pass that on. Now guys, the end result of sexual reproduction is a seed, right? And a seed has got a lot of advantages. Number one, it can lie dormant, right? So it's got a seed coat, it's got a protective covering, and it can actually not do anything until it's really necessary. Sometimes hundreds, thousands of years, believe it or not. But what can we do with the seed? If you notice in, um, in asexual reproduction, the potatoes 
it must produce a new plant right by it. When it comes to sexual reproduction, we've got this concept of a seed. Have a look here. Here a bird's going to eat a fruit, and the seed is in here. The bird's going to fly away, and that seed's going to be dispersed a long distance. Have a look at this dandelion over here. This is the seed, guys. This is a seed. And what's going to take it? The wind is going to take it, and it's going to blow it a long distance away. So when it comes to sexual reproduction, the offspring can actually go really, really far away from the parents where there might be more space, there might be right, more water, more sunlight, maybe not so crowded, the conditions are ideal for that plant then to grow. Okay, so what would be the disadvantages? Okay, so what would be the things, the, the cons? Now, as I said to you, the plants, when it comes to producing sexually, they have to produce a flower. And with that flower, they're going to produce pollen, and it needs a lot of energy, all right? It's slower, it's time-consuming. You need pollinators, so you can't use insect spray because then you're going to kill the insects along with the things that you really need. Okay, and yes, we could pass on unfavorable genes, but as I said to you, when you're looking at the concepts, what do you want? Do you want something predictable or do you want something new? It all depends on what we're looking at. And very often when we're looking at food security, being able farmers to feed our country, lots of times maybe asexual reproduction might benefit because we know what we're going to get. But playing around with sexual reproduction, right, getting to see the genes might be able to get something new that could be to the farmer's benefit. Okay, guys, we're going to have a quick break and we'll be right back just in a bit. <music> Welcome back, Life Sciences. We are looking at the ace, how plants are able to re reproduce, make more copies of themselves in two different kinds of ways. Asexual reproduction, where we have a more predictable outcome, and sexual reproduction, where we don't, right? Where we have these new combinations. Now, we're going to have a look at a few questions on this section. I'm going to be honest with you, it's very difficult. The questions on this section usually link, right, to maybe um, sections that we looked at before on plant biodiversity, when we looked at the fern, angiosperms, gymnosperms, etc. And the section we're going to look at after this is on flowers. So very often when it comes to this, all right, to this reproduction of sexual and asexual, right, it's linked to a lot of the concepts that we're looking at, right, in plant reproduction. But I've put together two, they, they're very similar in nature, but they just give you an idea of what kind of concepts to look for. As I said, we could maybe add things when we've done all the sections together. Okay, the first question is a little bit of a reading piece, and I don't know if you've ever heard of them, right? We're talking about vatablomachies. Um, I know it's an Afrikaans term, but the word is either flakos or it's called, in English, it's called the pondweed, right? And I know they don't look like flowers, but that is what they look like, right? These are actually flowers. I put a picture there just so that you can have it in your mind. Okay, let's read for it. They're flowers, all right? So if we look at the word flowers, I want you to start thinking about sexual reproduction have been used as a food source for many years, so we can eat them. The most common way in which Vata Bumiki flowers are prepared is as a traditional Cape Malay dish, a lamb or mutton stew called Vata Blomiki Bredi. All right? The Vata Blomikis are used as a vegetable in this dish. So we're just giving you an idea that we can actually eat the flowers. 
Now we're going to give you a little bit of more information. Plants grow in shallow dams. So guys, water, water, all right, that is a concept you need to, all right, think about because it could come up in some of the questions. And you'll see at the bottom here that shows you where they grow, all right, and how they are harvested. Optimal growth take place in the water in temperatures of 14 degrees. Okay, that is quite cold. The seeds, here we go, are collected. Again, a reference to sexual reproduction. And left in the water during August to develop roots. Okay, so that is, they live in the water, the seeds are going to develop roots, and a new plant is going to be evolved. The small, now have a look, the small bulbs, right, what do we know about a bulb? A bulb is a means of asexual reproduction, right? So what happens is the seeds actually form bulbs. They then take the bulbs out and then they plant those bulbs individually in dams. Right, so what happens is asexual reproduction. The older bulbs with more than one eyelet, there we go, those eyes, remember, like the potatoes, are cut in half for higher production as each produces a new plant. So here, the eyelet, and we cut in half, no mention about male or female. Again, it's telling us about asexual reproduction. Right, our first question is nice and easy. Which part of the Vata Blomiki is eaten by humans? Now, if we go back, right, if we have a look over here, it said the flowers have been used as a food source. And it gave you quite a few ways in which it could, right? So which part of the plant? Nice and easy part there. It is the flowers. Okay, now the leading question. Which two modes of reproduction are used by the Vartablomachy? So we know that the two are asexual. That's the one. Okay, and sexual. Now that's, we've got our mark there for that. Now it says to you over here, List two reasons, and that means how were you able to come up with the answer that it was sexual or asexual? And you must use the passage, all right, for how you got your supporting answer. And it says here, list two reasons. So let's start off with the asexual. Now, if I go back, all right, to my asexual, where did I make my first connotation here? Right, they spoke about the small bulbs. So I'm going to go back to my question and I notice bulbs. The plant produces bulbs. And what did these bulbs do? Right, let's carry on going back. What did they do? Okay, they grew, okay, the bulbs with more than one eyelet. So as the bulbs develop, what did we do? We cut the bulbs in half. We cut them in half. And we planted them and new plants, all right, were formed. So there we go. That gave us the idea that there's asexual reproduction. Now we're looking for the concepts. Now let's have a look at our question, our, our little information about these bulbs. Okay, guys, so we know that bulbs are a way of asexual reproduction. And there's that word eyelet again. We had the same when we had our potatoes, right? So when we look at our bulbs, what did we do, right? We first of all, the small bulbs were taken out and then they planted them into dams. The older bulbs were cut in half. All right, so what did we do? We cut the bulbs in half and we planted them. Nothing to do with seeds. 
We cut them and what did they give rise to? We planted them and they gave rise to a new plant. No mention of seeds or flowers, etc. That was your key, the word bulbs. So if you don't know what the bulb is responsible for asexual reproduction, you might have missed that. Okay, now let's look at where it tells us sexual reproduction occurs. And there are two places, if we go back, right, I want to go back one more. First of all, a flower. We, they eat them, yes, but we know that reproduction occurs sexually because a flower is produced. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at, it, and just in case you might have missed this, have a look here. I'm going to go back. There's a diagram of a flower, and that tells us, all right, of that this reproduction is going to occur sexually. So here we've got a flower, right, which we know is the reproductive sex organ. All right, so when we come to reproduction in flowers, it's the sex organ of the flower. Now have a look at our next one. Here they talk about the seeds, right? Seeds are the result of sexual reproduction. When the male and the female fuse, so our second point, seeds are produced. Okay, and seeds are only produced if you have a male and the female. So there we have telling us sexual, asexual, right, etc. Now, vertebromachies live in dams that can easily dry up towards the end of a hot, dry summer. Remember they said only 14 degrees, nice and cold. Explain how the plant is adapted to survive. Now remember what we said when we go back to this concept, right? We looked at the concepts of seeds. The seeds are collected and left in the water. But a seed can remain dormant for a long time. So it says explain how the plant is adapted, right? It has a seed, it forms a seed, should I say? What does the seed have around it? It has a seed coat that can protect it. And what else do seeds do? They can re remain dormant. That means they can just sit there until conditions, right, until conditions are favorable or better. I'm going to write that because then writing favorable is going to test my spelling. So this concept again of a seed is produced during sexual reproduction. How is the seed right, dispersed? Remember I said to you one of the things about the seed is it can go far away from the parents. Guys, where do water blomachies? Right, there we go. Water blomachy. Where are they? So what is going to take it away? It's going to be the water. Right, just looking into things, seeing if you can understand that concept. Okay, the next concept, we, the next question we're going to look at is about a potato. Now, potato, there's words that you've got here. Look here, there's a rhizome. We know is an underground stem. Right here is a flower. So again, we are looking at asexual and the flower going to be a means of sexual reproduction. Remember what I said to you, plants don't necessarily have one. Now this concept of the flower I've taken out of the question, but you would need to know at our next segment we're going to look at the flower, so you would need to be able to label it, as I said, the interconnectedness of all the questions. Okay, let's read the question. The potato tuber, tuber we know, asexual, all right, produces eyes which then grow into new plants. So we know asexual reproduction. The plant grows an area stem which give rise to flowers. Look at the same concept again, that range in color from light to dark purple. 
The plant will also grow an underground stem that will develop new tubers, asexual reproduction. Some variety of potatoes, flowers self-pollinate. We're not going to look at it now when we look at the question on pollination. Basically it means it pollinates itself, right? Green, round, poisonous fruits are produced after flowering and each fruit contains about 300 seeds. So again, we're looking at the potato, right? How it can undergo sexual and asexual. Now, if we go again, it says to us, discuss how the potato undergoes asexual reproduction. So we go and we have a look, guys, and we can quote directly from the text. The potato tuber produces eyes which planted grow into new plants. So asexual reproduction, it's got tubers. And on those tubers, it has eyes, and those eyes are going to grow into new plants. All right, so again, recognizing the word tubers, the previous question was bulbs. Sexual reproduction, two things again. Actually, there's more than two, right? There's a few things that you could have taken here. One, it had flowers that produced fruit. That is sexual reproduction. Or it produced seeds. And it said when it got to the flowers, it spoke about pollination, which means taking the male sex cell to the female sex cell. So we got a whole variety all right, of references leading to sexual reproduction. Give two advantages of sexual reproduction in the potato, all right, advantages of asexual. Any of them could have been it's quick, all right, it's less energy. There's a whole list that we had, all right, it is cheap. Okay, favorable traits can be passed on quickly. There was a whole lot that you could have used there and give any two advantages. All right, the last question, would you eat the fruit? The answer was no. If we go back, you'll see what did they tell you? The fruit is poisonous. All right. Okay, guys, that is all that we have for today. All right, so make sure you know asexual reproduction, predictable sexual reproduction, who knows what we will get. Until next time, cheery bye.